Oh yeah, baby. Oh, you gotta get into these things. <laughs> well, hello there. Uh, sorry, I was just uh, doing my homework with the book of the recently deceased, so, uh, you know, I wasn't getting turned on or anything. Oh, this, um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. I was looking at the Necromonicon. <laughs> getting a little hot there. Oh, this month's centerfold in the Necromonicon. Ooh, she's hot. Check that out. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I do miss Lydia. And I'm sure all of you have seen my updated Hollywood rendition of uh, what I've had to put up with since Lydia turned me away again. But, uh, you know, that's to be expected for someone of my stature. Down, boy. But anyway, I digress. Lydia and I, we go way back. Back to the early days of uh, my career. She's a hell of a girl. Now, what is it that you're interested in seeing today? You want to learn about this? Yeah. I've been around for hundreds of years, exercising spirits, as they say, and exercising the living. <laughs> I need to get back to the living. But old Lydia, she just isn't seeing it my way. Mostly because she seems to think I'm unattractive. Now what would you say to a man that's willing to share his Colt 45 with you, baby? Is that unattractive to you? Come on, Lydia. I am your pimp daddy. <laughs> Once again, I digress. Nothing like a quick Newport in the morning. Kind of wink you up to reality. Yeah. And, uh, I've been hitting the sauce pretty hard since, uh, Lydia left me again. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's neither here nor there. A little bit for daddy. <laughs> Just a little bit for daddy there. Oh, that's, that's some good. You gotta get the. Uh, you gotta get with it in the morning. You know what I'm saying. So, anyway, what can I do to help you? Because I, uh, I gotta work the, uh, phone banks. <clears throat> I gotta work the phone banks since Bob, uh, and the boys, uh, ran out on me. Hello there. What seems to be the problem? <laughs> Ooh, you wanting some triggers, huh? Well, what kind of triggers you want there, baby? Yeah, I can play horsey. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I thought that's what you were talking about. I'm sorry. Please don't report me to HR. Yeah, well, just hanging out here at my uh, boudoir. Oh, what are you wearing? 
Yeah, well, same to you. Uh, and yeah, word to your mother. <laughs> well, that didn't go so well. well. It looks like we got another call over here on the other bank. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, uh, yeah, Bob Hope. Yep. It hasn't been funny since the last century. Hmm. What are we going to do about that? Well, I don't know. Let me see what we got here in the book for reverence. Can you hold on a second there? Okay. Let me see what I got here. Uh, let's see if I can lose the phone call here. The art of suggestion. In the realm of the spectral, your intentions and thoughts can be stronger than any physical action and overlooked, but potent manifestation techniques, i.e. ghost activity, involves planting suggestions or influencing dreams. Have you ever had a dream that felt too real, too close to your waking world? That uh, could have been a result of spectral suggestion. Just saying. Uh, Touche. Uh, you are dealing with the dreams and thoughts of individuals, so tread lightly. All right. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye bye. Bye bye bye. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. That went pretty good. <clears throat> yeah. There's a lot of good stuff in here. Familiar shapes and scents. Nothing like the smell of a freshly showered lady. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we got here. Imagine the soft scent of a familiar perfume wafting into a room or the sound of a favorite song playing on a radio that's not even turned on. I'm turned on. Just in case you get it. No, I, I'm, I'm already turned on. Okay. You and me. Me, you. Where were we? Turned on? Yeah. <laughs> These are manifestations that go beyond the visual and physical. They're a calling to the senses. Awakening memories and emotions in the living. Mm. Practice embodying familiar forms or emitting nostalgic, titillating, titillating sense. Your manifestation can become a comforting, albeit mysterious mysterious presence. I love this book. I love it. That's why I only do one show a day, though. Right here. One do one show. One show. Because you never know. But, whoo! Embracing the void. Now, I'm not talking about the void between your ears. We're talking about the, the void. The, the, the great unknown. Okay. The first step toward mastering levitation is overcoming the psychological barriers ingrained by a lifetime living under gravity's rule you are no longer a being of flesh and bones bound by the physical laws of the living world you have become an entity of energy and will with the ability to move and exist beyond the conventional restrictions of the physical universe, i.e. your ghost. It's a real book. You gotta, you gotta crack these things open sometimes. You know, I helped this couple one time. They were pretty nice people. But, dare I say, they were a little bit on the noob side. Yeah, I tried to help them. But they wouldn't listen. Cracked that baby open. 
So I tried to steal their uh, future foster daughter. Oh, that's good. Colt 45 works every time. <laughs> Just ask Billy D. Oh, Billy D. Billy D. You notice Skywalker died. Princess Leia died. Han Solo died. Lando. Lando Calrissian rode off into the sunset. <laughs> Was this plan all along, bitches? Mmm. And that's what you get for touching a black man's radio. That's what you get. Yeah, me and Lando, we go way back. I remember this time back in the old days. Yep, in a far off place a long, long time ago. <laughs> We were riding around in the Millennium Falcon, just trying to pick up some chicks. Hey, baby, what's going on? What you wearing? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, that's nice. Oh, shagomatic. <laughs> Shagadelic. <laughs> yeah, I'm smoking again. Don't worry. Yeah, well, I'm going to give it up. I'm going to give it up. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Jesus loves you, baby. All right. Later. So, it's getting to be the holidays. Got to take care of business. You got to be there for the ladies. Like old, uh, some of these guys say, don't worry, I'm out here to protect the ladies. I'm protecting the ladies of this country. Whether they want it or not. Whether they want it or not. You know who they're protecting them from? <laughs> Old Beetle. Beetle, Beetle. That's what they say in the sack. Beetle, 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 Beetle. Three times fast. Oh, you got it, baby. <laughs> I was blowing it there. Yeah, me and the ladies go way back. Oh, that felt good. Let's see. I got a surprise for you. You want to see it? Let me show you. I think you'll like it. Strip tease here a little bit for you. Dry my hands off on my smoking jacket. Smoking. Calm down. It's all gonna. It's all gonna make sense. It's all gonna come together. I'm telling you. Hey, you wanted it. You got it. You know what I'm saying? You can't request these things and then bitch. Well, it turns out for shit. But you know, just doing the best I can here. Who's this reminiscing of? Yeah. Old Jack. Skellington. Hello, everybody. I'm Jack Skellington. And I'm going to save Halloween. Right. Right after. Right after Santa Claus dusts your ass. That son of a... Anyway. Never gives you anything for Christmas you want. All I want is Lydia Dietz. On a silver platter. <laughs> if you've come this far, this is the fun part of the video. Rip a doo. Rick a dick doo. Lots of fun. Jack Skellington inspired. What are you gonna do? You don't see things like this on all those other channels, do you? Look like a like a doo, like a dee dee. So, Lydia and I, we go way back. She's a hell of a gal. I want some more of this java juice. This is some good shit. Mmm. Ah, uh, that's 
some good shit. You can't even get these things anymore. I gotta go down the hood to find them. Oh, me and the brothers know how to do it righteous. Do it righteous. Righteous. Just, I was thinking when I got up this morning and I did my hair and my makeup and I said, Ooh, wait till I get a load of me. <laughs> Wrong movie. I hope you like this. I like it. I like it a lot. A little trigger for you. I want a trigger. You want something to trigger you? A little stretchy, goofy, striped little, little bit of Tim Burton for you. Walka 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 walka. Woo day. You know, a little bit of Colt 45 in the morning. First thing in the morning, wind you up. A little bit of Daddy's little helper. <laughs> Woo! I think I'm running out. I better get back in here to the juice. Where'd I? The, <laughs> the juice is loose. I even carry my own. A little bit, a little bit for Daddy, and a little more for Daddy. Woo! Happy Daddy! Daddy happy. There we go. Let's see if I got my lighter here. Got my new ports. Tamp down the cigarette here. Got a cigarette with the a cigarette went out. Okay, now I get this thing in my pocket. These gloves are something else. I don't know how anybody gets anything done with these things. Okay, my lighter here. Oh, Lydia, wear black for me, you goth, you goth princess, you, you're a queen, you're a queen, oh, my little goth princess, oh, oh, Lydia, Lydia, oh, Lydia, my Lydia, have you met Lydia? Lydia the Tattooed Lady, yeah, remember that song? That was a Fisher King, that was a different movie too. Ooh. Hard to light up a smoke with this. Yeah, well, what are you gonna do? Anyway. It's that most wonderful time of the year. It's the spookiest season and everyone's squealing and having good cheer. <laughs> Are you gonna do what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? I kinda like it. So, this is my plan. The first time around, Lydia got away from me. Pulled the old three and out. You know what I'm talking about. Don't want to say it out loud. Not allowed. Cheating. So anyway, they put me back down in my holding cell. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Wrecked my marriage. But that's okay. And then the pizzas got older. All of them. I forgot about good old Beetle. But they could just slide off into the glorious sunset of suburbia in their little half-assed haunted house and forget about me, the ghost, with the most. Oh, that was good. But that's where they were wrong. Because I got 
the manual. I know all the rules. And just in case you haven't realized this from the two knockoff, very poorly done Hollywood movies on my biography. <laughs> I'm the only one who ever read said book. Nobody reads it. They never read it. I'm the only one that knows all the loopholes. I'm the only one that knows how the thing works. You know, like the essence of ectoplasmic crafting. Like, who in the hell wants to read that? It reads like microwave reheating instructions. Listen to this. Ectoplasmic crafting is about <laughs> your spectral energy, your <laughs> Exto ectoplasm. You might know that from that knockoff Ghostbusters, which there's nothing real in there. But, and shaping it into forms and expressions. It's like molding clay, but instead of clay, you're using the very fabric of your Spectral self, your spectral self. That's, you know, it's kind of like a selfie for ghosts, you know what I mean? I don't know. But then there's just some of my favorites. Like understanding. I'll put that back in place. Understanding. Sandworm patterns. Though initially daunting. One can discern patterns in sandworm behavior. Pay attention to their movements and frequencies. What's the frequency, Kenneth? What's the frequency, Kenneth? I need more to drink. Daddies. Thirsty. <laughs> Pay attention to their movements and frequencies. Do they tend to surface at particular times or in specific areas? Shut up. <sighs> Identifying these patterns can give you a distinct advantage and help you avoid risky zones. Waka waka. Cloak your energy. Cloak your energy. Eat all your vegetables. Always wipe. Change your underwear daily in case you're in a wreck. And your energy. Just as you sense your the sandworms, they too can sense your spectral energy by learning to cloak your energy by making it quiet. You can become less noticeable to these gigantic creatures. Think of it as a spectral version of camouflage. You know, I remember the ghost version of Maxim circa 2005 when those photos of Lydia Dietz in Cyprus, in the Mediterranean, leaked. Oh, Lydia. She was a naughty, nasty little girl. A naughty little girl. <laughs> you make a grown man cry. <clears throat> Yippers. Yippers. Mm-hmm. bottoms up and labels out <clears throat> yeah I remember Lydia 
I used to think about her all the time in my deepest, darkest moments. Oh, where could she go? Where has she been? Don't worry, everybody. It's just the booze talking. She was just a little girl when I met her. Nothing weird there. She was an adult. I don't know. Look, my grandmother was 14 when she got married. My other one was 15. Sue me if times have changed. But there was a little bit, you know, it was a little taboo. It was a little bit, well, you can't do that anymore. You can't do that anymore. So I couldn't go after her daughter because everybody would go, so, you know, political correctness. So I got to go after the old lady, the old lady. Hey, Lydia, you might be the old lady, but just because there's a little bit of, just because there's a little snow on the roof doesn't mean there isn't any fire in the pan. You know what I'm saying, honey? Lydia, you still got it. And I still want it. I just want to get married, basically. And then I can get the hell out of here, because that's what the book says. It's right here in the book. You just got to read this thing. You know, if you would just marry me, I'd go about my way. I screwed my last wife over. You should figure that out by now. As long as we don't have kids, I don't owe you anything. We were only together for the first night. Well, I forgot the, the part where I have to consummate the marriage. <laughs> Hoo-wee! Mama, better wear something cute tonight. But, uh, don't tell Lydia that. Don't tell her about that consummate the marriage part. Because that's a little greasy. That's a little, you know. But if you saw the original movie, I mean, she was, you know, I don't know, I was only 400 years old. It's just naughty, no matter how you look at it. But, that's how... That's how love is, you know. It's just a crazy little thing called love. And then what are we to do? You know, what are you going to do? <laughs> I like it. And, you know, it comes from these... Everybody in Hollywood's a pervert. You know, just ask anybody, you know. So, what are you going to do? You know, I was just doing my part. I got my little bow tie on, my little smoking jacket, and uh, got her family out of the way, and all her friends out of the way, and I saved her foster parents, and then, uh, yeah, what about paying off the, the juice, huh? Just a little something something, you know? Ass, <coughs> ass or cra cash. Nobody rides for free, Lydia. <laughs> and if you're riding the ghost, you're about to get the most. <laughs> it all comes back to that, doesn't it? But I noticed they cleaned up my biography in this latest installment that Hollywood peckered out and spoozed from their vagina for the masses, the family-friendly ghost romp where... You could take your kids and go, Oh, this is what it was like when I was a child. You know. Oh, I have such good memories of Beetlejuice. I didn't know he was a pervert. Mm. Hate to break your heart, Mama. But up yours. I don't know. Somebody requested that I get on here and do something here. For all of you good people. So here it is. And I love ya. If nothing else, the Beatle loves ya. A waka 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 voodoo day. So I think that went pretty good. Don't you? <laughs> so in closing, let's see what we figured out. Beetlejuice sucks at his job. But he's the only guy that ever read the manual. 
He looks at hardcore porn. Other than Necromonicon. He still smokes, even though it's ethically frowned upon on social media and YouTube's algorithm. And he drinks hard liquor all night long and dies behind the wheel. They got a name for the winners of the world. But I want a name when I lose. They call Alabama the Crimson Tide. Call me Deacon Blues. Deacon Blues. How's Alabama doing this year? I haven't been watching. <clears throat> yeah, what are we going to do? I don't know. It's a living. I love you, Tim Burton. I love you, you crazy SOB.